Hey Nikki, hello Dan. It's uh, the 9th of February, 2015, uh, 7.48 in the evening. And I am responding, Nikki, to I think your last three videos. Um, the, and so I've got, of course, a whole host full of notes and I think I'm gonna understand most of them. Um, so, we'll see. Uh, Goose Slayer, um, <laughs> I'm not going to judge. Um, did you actually take the goose home and cook it? Because uh, I don't know what the laws are in, in Oregon, but in Minnesota, if you hit a deer, you can actually claim it um, and take it home and render it into, you know, deer cutlets. Um, also, you were... <laughs> I did notice, though, you said that uh, the visibility was like zero, but yet you were still going 20 miles an hour. I think you're probably fortunate you didn't hit a kid. Uh, they also would not stick in your grill, but you'd probably feel worse about that. Um, it's actually something that uh, we saw a lot of in law enforcement were accidents and fog. Um, I think generally, probably even myself included, um, not probably, but myself included, just assume that nothing's going to be in our way in the fog and if it is tough so uh, so far I've not run over any children either I'll let you know if I do um, let's see uh, you named you had a video called Suga 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 is that like sugar or were you trying to say Stuga which is the mother-in-law's apartment Stuga I want you to write it down in fact you can even get a tattoo on your ass S-T-U-G-A, Stuga, okay. Um, healthy, sick, uh, you need to move to Minnesota um, because no one here, uh, especially in the winter time, ever gets sick. Uh, we are all uh, healthy all winter long, primarily because of the cold. Um, and, uh, and of course you need to swim and you need to swim outdoors when there's ice floating on the water. Uh, so that's my, uh, that's my suggestions, but I am glad you're feeling better. Um, I know what it's like to be chronically, no, I don't know what it's like to be chronically ill, but I can imagine what it's like to be chronically ill. And judging from how much better you sound or have, or how much better you sounded in these last couple of videos, I can imagine how miserable you must have been. So I'm glad you're feeling better. Um, <coughs> music. Um, you're right. You Light Up My Life is uh, was not The Carpenters. It was Debbie Boone. You're correct. Um, and that was actually her first and perhaps only hit. But I have to tell you, I went back and watched the video and Debbie Boone was hot. I, I've got like post facto crush now on Debbie Boone, uh, even if she is 10 years older than me. Um, and um, I mean, she actually had a great voice. It was it was a little bit, a little low. Uh, you know, it wasn't those high girly voices that we get now in popular music. It was, uh, it was a good voice. Um, it's unfortunate that she was spawn of Pat. Um, I think that as I saw, I watched an interview with her, she said that was Put a crimp on her social life significantly. Uh, Pat Boone was just about the straightest shooter there was. Well, so the public believes. Who knows what he really was? Um, and um, but I do have to tell you in that same interview with with Debbie Boone, uh, they showed her playing bocce with her husband in their backyard. I mean, it was just sort of this pure wholesome American thing, but when she threw the, when she threw the bocce ball, um, there ended my crush because she clearly has no ability to throw a ball and that bummed me out. Um, but the Carpenters, um, I love the Carpenters, Nikki, and uh, I'm assuming you're going to gag over that as well. Uh, but Karen Carpenter, 
And I watched this really long multi-part series on that on YouTube about the Carpenters, and she was actually really, really interesting, uh, really talented. Um, and I don't know if you know, but she actually covered, and I may have talked about this before in a video, but yeah, he didn't have a percussion. she covered all the drum parts in all of their songs. She was actually a percussionist. And there's a couple of videos where she's doing, you know, playing percussion. And it's just, make a video! <coughs> playing percussion and doing, I mean, it's just, it's just her energy and her spirit um, are just really, and her attitude are really cool. Um, and it's, it's sad that it ended the way it did. Um, but her brother was, or is even, because he's still living, is really a strange guy. Um, go back on if you you know if you care at all watch those videos and listen to her brother talk he's just he's too controlled you just don't feel like you have a sense of who he is or what's really going on whereas Debbie Boone is very straightforward and I like that um, it's like um, you know who was the name of the woman in the Partridge family she was also in the music man she's a straight shooter too she's, she's pretty awesome um, Strident, loud people. Nikki, you are very right. An a-hole is an a-hole, whether female or male. And if you've got strident, loud, overbearing people in the workplace, it's okay to not like them, no matter whether they are female or male. Um, Grand Budapest Hotel. Dan, you said you had watched that on the plane, on the flight back from... Puerto Vallarta or Wales or I don't know insert name of foreign destination here uh, did you did you like it you said you wanted to watch it again um, Beth and I watched it and it it's very stylized um, the director actually works with a lot of miniatures in it um, and it's I, I was reading some reviews about it and they were just going on and on about about I think the way he made the movie and and but Beth and I both found it to be really there were times when it was so drawn out it was like oh my god this is kind of <laughs> what is what is this chasing to the end I mean it was just almost unbearably long um, but we loved the acting um, let's see uh, Vegas trip I'm glad you had another successful Vegas trip and I'm glad you did not go with the drunken necklace people even though the drunken part was you and the necklace was them that's fine um, sounds like you had a better time um, although you did comment that you went with a couple who could handle their liquor but again as you stated that wasn't the problem last time uh, with, the, with the other couple that was more your problem so uh, how did you do this time were you, uh, were you able to uh, to stay mostly upright. Um, and I, I want to clarify something in, in all seriousness. Your time is not without value. Uh, I don't believe that your time is without value, nor do I think that if you choose to work for 50 cents an hour uh, on a fundraiser, that that is an, an, is an invaluable experience or unvaluable. It's, it's invaluable, but it's not unvaluable. Um, because there's a great deal of um, camaraderie that's built and, and uh, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Community that's built when you do those things. What I was saying is that in terms of a money maker, there are far more efficient ways of making that exact same amount of money in probably a tenth of the time. Um, looking at it from just a purely fiscal perspective. So that's all I was saying. Um, you know, there's, uh, you can do the carnival. I'm not going to make fun of you for that. Um, and, you know, we all choose to do work that is not compensated. You know, I'm not even sure exactly how, how one judges how something should be compensated or whether one is compensated enough 
we're never compensated enough. Hell, I'm not compensated enough for all the things I have to put up with. Ask Beth. I'm sure she's not compensated nearly enough uh, being married to me. Um, there's no compensation enough <laughs> to be married to me. Um, and perhaps we would all say that same thing for our spouses. But um, it's but it's in terms of again in terms of fundraising we have convinced kids especially that the only way they can raise 500 bucks or a thousand dollars is going out and peddling something door to door that people don't need and they don't really need to be selling when in fact they could just go get a job and make a thousand bucks in a much shorter amount of time and maybe even keep 10 percent uh for themselves so it's an idea um but but no i'm not judging you for uh for working the carnival, um, not for working the carnival anyway. Um, the pants video that I made, Nikki, actually, I think you missed the point. The point was not that I wear the pants. The point was that Beth wears the pants. She's in there fixing the bathtub, spending all day going to the hardware store three times when, in fact, I didn't want to do it. She wears the pants. That's that was my point of a pants video. So. Um, Minneapolis in May. Tell me when in May you think you're going to be here, Nikki, because I've got a calendar that's filling up quickly, mostly with golf. But uh, but no, the only thing that actually is golf related that I'm that is sort of a standing date is with my friend Adam in Des Moines. I'll be down there um, the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th of May. So tell me when it is that you're going to be here um, so that I can get it on my calendar. Um, family reunion? Um, yes, that, that, is, that is, as you said, uh, that's sucker work right there. So, but um, again, for a family reunion, there is no compensation enough. You know, I know why you're doing it, and I, and I hope you guys have a good time. Um, tell me where you're going again. I didn't quite understand it, um, and I don't know where that is. You say, like, Crackhead Ridge um, on Mount Hoodie. Is that what it was? So clarify that for me. Um, mass volume weight, uh, snowshoeing. I don't know why you're looking at me as if somehow I'm the physicist here. Uh, I don't think we need to worry about mass because um, since we're dealing with, I mean, Weight is a function of gravity, right? Working on mass. Um, and since Scott and, uh, or Scott Fairley, Dan's neighbor, Scott Fairley, from across the street, and Dan weigh or are being subject to the same gravity, then mass is kind of irrelevant. So, um, not irrelevant. It's just not, you know, we can just call it weight. So, I think that. Um, I don't know. I don't know what you wanted to know about that. So, um, uh, first B, you said Maddie. Was that Maddie? Tessie. Tessie, Maddie, Maddie. I can't remember which one. Ted, Maddie, I think. Got her first B, and thank God that's over. Uh, I know what you mean. It's like uh, the Seahawks losing the first game of the season. It's like, ah, oh, thank God. Now we don't have to worry about the perfect season anymore. Um, and um, uh, so, yeah, good. Glad she got that away. She, could, she should go ahead and just... You know, really shoot low and get an F. That way, she's really, really feels like that's out of the way. You don't have to worry anymore. Um, <laughs> but I know what you mean. It's often A's become goals in and of themselves, regardless of the educational piece. So good for her, throwing that B in there. I like it. Uh, you talked about you had gone away and uh, not paid attention or had your settings incorrectly. In, incorrect in YouTube, so you didn't know when we were making videos, and you came back and there were 90 minutes of Karu talking. Well, I can't think of many things that are as good as 90 minutes of me talking. Um, unless, of course, we're talking about the Super Bowl. Um, Dan, uh, I, know, I know what you mean about not watching it. Um, I think that's probably why during the season I try not to even during the regular season route for any particular team, 
And what I find is if I say it out loud, it's like I'm making it more real or something or making myself more stressed out. And the last thing I want to do is tell anybody who I'm rooting for, even if I am rooting for somebody, because they just, man, people are asses. They dig at you, and I hate it. Um, so anyway, what I found was that uh, there was a party actually at the Iyengars. The Iyengars, Nikki, are friends of ours from India. And, and, and Savita puts out this huge spread of Indian food. It's awesome. Uh, and I didn't want to go this year because I didn't want... I, I guess I didn't want the stress of being there and having people rooting and having to get pulled into that. So I found if I just stayed at home and just said nothing... It's like I can think I'm rooting for a team, but as long as I don't say it out loud, even in my own household, it somehow reduces the stress. Also, I did bet my brother Barry a dollar that the Patriots were, were going to win by four, um, which is kind of funny because that's exactly what they won by. Um, so, um, anyway, there's always next year, right? I'm finally over it. I didn't actually sleep for the first two nights because I couldn't think of anything else but that play. So... Um, Disney, soaking wet. Um, one of the things you want to avoid, Nikki, is having um, a chafed hoo-hoo when you're walking around Disney. So I think it's wise that when you got wet, you went back to the hotel um, and dried yourself off and took a nap. So, um, yeah, and the weather's got to be nice for that kind of thing. But even then, again, the last thing you want to do is walk around with, you know, wet panties on. I mean, I tried it last weekend, and I can't tell you how uncomfortable I was. Um... You know, uh, Nikki, you were talking about several videos ago going to going to a Seahawks game and, and really enjoying that. And, you know, it's funny because I, I a couple of years ago, my dad and I, no, it wasn't my dad, um, Bhaskar Iyengar, that friend of mine from India, and I, and Duncan and, and um, Akshay, his oldest son, went to the PGA Championship, uh, which was up here at Medina um, in... Um, Minneapolis. And what I found was that the last place I want to watch golf is at a major golf tournament because unless you were willing to camp out at one hole and just sit there and not move, then you couldn't see, you just couldn't see anything. Um, and I know that obviously in a football game you can see you're up in the stands, you can see, but still it's